good morning my dear students welcome to the discussion on the subject engineering mechanics under this we are discussing now problem on resultant of coplanar concurrent force system this is the second solved problem we are discussing under resultant of coplanar concurrent force system now we will enter into the problem the given problem is determine the resultant of the forces acting on a body as shown in figure here a is the body on this body the forces say f1 is equal to 150 newton is acting with an angle of 30 degrees to the x axis and another force say f2 is equal to 80 newton is acting with an angle of 20 degrees to the y axis and another force say f3 is equal to 110 newton is acting vertically down along the y axis and another force say f4 is equal to 100 newton acting with an angle of 15 degrees to the x axis our objective is we need to find the resultant of the force system the solution part is divided into two steps step 1 finding the components that is horizontal as well as vertical components for the given forces step 2 finding the magnitude and direction of the resultant of the forces next step is finding the components for the given forces that is finding horizontal as well as vertical components that is resolve the forces into their horizontal as well as vertical components here we are considering upward as well as rightward forces as positive downward as well as leftward forces as negative here force f1 magnitude is 150 newton and it is making an angle 30 degrees to the x axis now we will resolve the f1 force into its horizontal as well as vertical components this is the force f1 which is equal to 150 newton and it is making an angle 30 degrees to the x axis so the horizontal component becomes 150 cos 30 degrees and the vertical component becomes 150 sin 30 degrees then we will resolve 80 newton force this 80 newton force is making an angle 20 degrees to the y axis so the horizontal component becomes 80 sin 20 whereas vertical component becomes 80 cos 20 now we'll resolve 80 newton force into its horizontal as well as vertical components is the 80 newton force and it is making an angle 20 degrees to the y axis then along the y axis we will get cos and along the x axis we will get sin so the vertical component becomes 80 cos 20 degrees horizontal component becomes 80 sin 20 degrees because the horizontal component is moving towards left that's why it is minus then we'll resolve f3 because it is acting vertically downward because it is vertically downward its horizontal component is zero because vertically down that's why this 110 newton force becomes minus value so we are considering only vertical component whereas its horizontal component is zero is because it is acting vertically downward that's why it is minus 110 newton then we will consider f4 force f4 is equal to 100 newton and this force is making an angle 15 degrees to the x axis then its horizontal component becomes 100 cos 15 and vertical component becomes 100 sin 15 whereas the vertical component is acting vertically downward that's why it is negative whereas horizontal component is 
passing towards the x axis rightward direction that's why it is positive say 100 newton and it is making an angle 15 degrees to the x axis then the component force is traveling towards rightward direction that's why it is positive so it is 100 cos 15 degrees and vertical component is acting vertically downward that's why it is minus 100 sin 15 that is finding the components for the given forces is over then we will find the summation of the horizontal components as well as summation of the vertical components now we will draw the component forces for the forces given in the figure first we will draw the component forces for the 150 newton force for this the horizontal component force is 150 cos 30 degrees and vertical component force is 150 sin 30 degrees and then for 80 newton force the horizontal component force is 80 sin 20 degrees because the force is traveling towards left hand side direction that is leftward direction that's why it is negative value whereas vertical component force is 80 cos 20 degrees this is 80 sin 20 degrees and this is 80 cos 20 degrees because the component force that is horizontal component force is traveling towards leftward direction that's why it is negative value this is traveling towards upward direction that's why it is positive that is 80 cos 20 degrees and then f3 it is a acting vertically downward direction because it's a vertical force that's why its horizontal component is zero whereas vertical component is 110 newton because it is acting vertically downward direction that's why it is negative value that is f y3 is equal to minus 110 newton and then for 100 newton force the horizontal component force is 100 cos 15 degrees and vertical component force is 100 sin 15 degrees because the vertical component force is traveling towards downward direction that's why it is negative value that is minus 100 sin 15 degrees and this horizontal component value is 100 cos 15 degrees now we'll write the summation of horizontal components as well as vertical components first we'll write the summation of horizontal components that is sigma f of x sigma f of x is equal to fx1 plus fx2 plus fx3 plus fx4 here fx1 is equal to 150 cos 30 degrees fx2 is equal to minus 80 sin 20 degrees and fx3 is equal to 0 and fx4 is equal to 100 cos 15 degrees and substitute these values in this equation then sigma f of x is equal to 199.13 newton then summation of vertical component forces to be calculated that is sigma f of y sigma f of y is equal to fy1 plus fy2 plus fy3 plus fy4 here fy1 is equal to 150 sin 30 degrees fy2 is equal to 80 cos 20 degrees fy3 is equal to minus 110 newton and fy4 is equal to minus 100 sin 15 degrees substitute these values in this equation then sigma f of y is equal to 14.295 newton sigma f of x is equal to 199.13 newton and sigma f of y is equal to 14.295 newton with this we completed first step solution then we'll move towards second step solution for finding the magnitude as well as direction of the resultant force in the second step we will find the magnitude as well as direction of the resultant force acting on a body 
in order to find the magnitude as well as direction of the resultant force acting on your body we need to use the first step solution information that is summation of original component value as well as summation of vertical components value here summation of original components value that is sigma f of x is equal to 199.13 newton and sigma f of y is equal to 14.295 newton then we will find the magnitude of the resultant force that is r is equal to square root of sigma f of x whole square plus sigma f of y whole square so r is equal to square root of sigma f of x whole square plus sigma f of y whole square here substitute sigma f of x is equal to 199.13 newton and sigma f of y is equal to 14.295 newton after substituting these values we will get r is equal to square root of 39857.1 and r is equal to 199.64 newton that is the magnitude of the resultant force acting on a body is equal to 199.64 newton then we will find the direction of the resultant force that is theta for that we will use the formula tan theta is equal to sigma f of y by sigma f of x here sigma f of y is equal to 14.295 newton and sigma f of x is equal to 199.13 Newton, which is equal to 0 0.07178, then theta is equal to 4.1 degrees. Here, sigma f of x as well as sigma f of y are positive. That means the resultant force is acting in the first quadrant. The magnitude of the resultant force R is equal to 199.64 Newton and the resultant force is making an angle 4.1 degree with the x axis. Here, the magnitude of the resultant force R is equal to 199.64 Newton and direction of the resultant force that is theta is equal to 4.1 degree. This is the solution for the given problem. If you have any doubts or queries, to write it down below comment section. I will be very happy to answer it. Visit again for more videos on engineering mechanics using the links provided under the description of this video. Keep learning and knowledge sharing. Stay blessed. Thank you.